Eager loading is a way to improve performance by preloading associated content through the database. What does that mean? Well, let me show you in this simple example. Here I have a list of product records, and each product is within a category. Now, the category isn't just a simple column on the products table, it is actually an associated record. Here you can see that our product model belongs to a category, so when we want to display the name within that view in the table, let's check it out here in the index template, we are displaying it by going through that category association to print out the category's name. So this works great, but let's say performance is an issue and we want to try to optimize this page, a good place to look is the database queries. Now if we check out the development log, we can see that there are a lot of queries being performed on this request. Now, this is known as the n plus one problem, meaning we have one query to fetch the initial products, and then for each of those records returned, we're doing another query to fetch the category name for that given product. Thankfully, Active Record has some built-in caching support, where if it detects a duplicate query, it's just going to return the cached result instead of having to hit the database every time. This can really help with performance in scenarios like this. You can see most of these queries are just the cached result. However, there's still some unnecessary overhead going on here, and in general, the fewer database queries you can perform per request, the better the performance. However, that's not always the case. Whenever you're trying to improve performance of a page like this, it's always a good idea to uh, profile the uh, request in a setup that's as close to your production environment as possible because every little thing could affect it. For example, if your database server is on a separate machine from the web server, then it's going to have to communicate over the network each time it sends a query, and that can add some overhead, making the number of queries a bigger factor. Now I covered profiling in episode 368, but here let's focus on how eager loading can help reduce the number of queries performed. Now that request is triggering this products controller index action, which is where we are fetching the products and ordering them by the name. Uh, now one of the easiest ways to add eager loading to this is just to call includes and then passing in uh, the category here because that's what we want to uh, include as well in our database query so that it eager loads it. Now whenever you're unsure of whether to uh, pluralize this includes call or not, you always want to match the name of the association on the model. So our product model here belongs to a category, so that's the name that we should use in the includes a call. Now reloading the page, it still works just like before. And now if we take a look at the development log, the number of queries performed on that request has been reduced down to two, uh, one to fetch the products and another to fetch the categories for each of those products. Now you may think a single query would be better here, but it's often more efficient to do two queries uh, if they're simpler instead of one more complex query. Now because we're using two separate queries here, it's not really a good idea to uh, use the associated data within uh, the same query. For example, what if we want to order the products based off of the category's name instead of the product's name? Now if we try this out and reload this page, this does actually work, but let me tell you why it's not a good idea. If we take a look at the development log, we can see that Active Record was smart enough to detect that we're using the categories information in the products query so that it should use a single query with joins uh, to perform this. However, this is a little bit unreliable because it involves having to uh, interpret the SQL string that's passed in and it's also being deprecated in Rails 4, so you really shouldn't rely on doing this. Instead, if you need to use the associated data in the query like we are here, you should use joins directly instead of includes. This way you're guaranteed to use a join in a single query. Now there are several other differences with joins as well. It's not going to do quite as much for you because it's not going to try to populate the associated data in active record. For example, in our view, when we uh, in, uh, loop through the products and display the category's name, the joins call is not going to populate this category's information here. This category call will actually trigger a separate database query. However, this is often uh, can be used to improve performance further by using joins instead of includes because you can fetch just the data you need uh, within the product records. For example, you will often see the joins call accompanied by a select call so that we can limit what we want to fetch. So let's grab all the products information and as far as the categories columns, let's just grab the categories name because that's the only thing we're trying to uh, display on the page here. And let's alias this as a category name. Now this category name will become an attribute on our product model so we can reference that directly in the view instead of having to go through the category association. We'll just call category name directly like this. And if I reload this page, it still works because we're loading the category name through the join. 
And if we take a look at the development log, we can see there's only one query being performed here to fetch the products and the category name, and it's doing the inner join properly to fetch the categories that are associated with it. Now, if you are doing this where you're changing the attributes on a record dynamically through a select clause, then I recommend defining a method with that name so that method is always there and reliable so you don't have to uh, rely on the dependency of that select clause always be de being defined in the same way. What I mean here is in our product model, we can define a method called category name, and then we can use a read attribute to fetch that uh, through the uh, database query if we did use a select clause and uh, did that for performance, or we can just fetch it through the category's name association so we can fall back to that if we happen to uh, fetch the products in another way. Also, you'd probably want to refactor this controller and move this complex query in the product model because it is a little heavy here for the controller. Now I want to finish up here by showing you a few more tricks you can do with eager loading in the console. Uh, both the includes and joins method allow you to pass in any associations in here. So like I showed you earlier, product belongs to a category so we can pass it in. However, you can pass in multiple associations in here as well. For example, a product has many reviews so we can pass that in and then that will be added as a join in the query. And you can go deeper as well. For example, review belongs to a user. In cases where you want to go deeper, you can use a hash. So a review belongs to a user, and you can join that in as well, and it will match it up correctly. And finally, if you need more control over your joins, you can just pass an SQL query into it. Uh, we could do a left outer join instead of an inner join, and we could say uh, the categories on the category ID is the categories.id. And we can see here the uh, SQL query that was performed includes our outer join. So you might want to do this if you want to include products that might not have an associated category. Well, I think we're all done optimizing this page now. Instead of having to perform a separate query on each record, uh, we're now down to a single query and fetching just the data we need. By the way, if you want help to be notified of when to use eager loading, check out the bullet gem, which I covered in episode 372. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.